G'day there. You're watching the Aussie BIM Guru, and today we've reached uh, part three of my series on tracking Dynamo usage uh, using Dynamo and Power BI to visualize that data. So today's the exciting part. We get to actually visualize our data using Power BI. So originally we've made a log file using a custom node for each Dynamo script we ran. Then we combine those into a single file. And today we're gonna to process that file into a visual data report in Power BI in order to generate metrics that we can show to management and executive and also for us to track Dynamo ourselves to see not only who's using Dynamo, but what scripts they're running and how frequently they're running them. So what is Power BI? So it's a product by uh, Microsoft. Uh, it's been around a little while, but it's become quite popular uh, over the last few months I've noticed in my industry and architecture. Uh, it's really an interactive data visualization tool. So whilst you get graph readouts, um, it's dynamic. So as that data changes, so will the Power BI file as well. And you can isolate data sets as well, which I'll show you shortly, which is pretty cool. Obviously this is a quite advanced um, version of a Power BI report you can see on the right. Uh, but there's a lot of options of how you can visualize data and how easy it is to do. Um, and you can see here, we're gonna turn this data into a simple report that looks a little bit like this in a pretty quick amount of time. And whilst I'm not gonna show you everything about Power BI today, because there's a lot you can do with Power BI, I'll try and show you some basic features and let you have the tools to build a report. So the best part about Power BI is if you get Power BI desktop, it's free. Um, there is some limits to how you can use this data. You can't put it on the web, um, so you can't deploy this across your organization, but it's an easy program to open and roll out to other people's machines if they want to look at the data, if they want to interact with it as well. So you can get it from the Microsoft Store or from their website. So without further ado, let's actually explore how to generate our report in Power BI. So I'm just gonna open up Power BI first. So this is the interface uh, for Power BI that you can see here. Um, however, what we need to do first is get our Excel data. So you may recall in our last session that we actually had our Excel file, our combined log file. I'm just gonna make a copy of this for safekeeping and we'll work in the combined log file. And the reason we're going into this log file is because we need to format the date time settings. So you may recall that we added, uh, whoops, data's went a bit funny there. You may recall that we've added a little apostrophe at the end of our dates. And that's so that Excel doesn't make any assumptions about how we want to format our dates. Um, I think I might be able to do a find and replace, but I've had some issues with this sometimes. So if I just replace all with none, see how sometimes Excel makes various assumptions about how to format date time. So that's really annoying. Um, what I want to do with that instead is just set up a little formula over on the right here. And we're going to use the substitute formula. So we're going to say equals substitute and we're going to substitute in this piece of text here and we're going to replace uh, the string of apostrophe with an empty string and because this is a formula excel doesn't have the chance to reformat this data so you'll see that if i drag that down it's holding its format without the apostrophe and then if i copy that and i paste as values on top you'll see that i end up with data that did not reformat so that's how you can manage your daytime settings so at this point, I'll just save this data. And what we're gonna do is take this into Power BI. So in Power BI, you've got a pretty pretty simple uh, visual desktop. Um, takes a while to get used to where everything is and what everything else, it, else is. But you basically have fields and visualization options that relate to them. And this is where our data is gonna show up in Power BI. You also have a couple of tabs. So you have a data tab, and then you have a relationships tab where you can set relationships between various Excel tables that are loaded into Power BI. So the data essentially gets nested into the Power BI file. So what we're gonna do is go get data and that should immediately take us to a little dropdown and we can get a lot of different types of data. So you can get SQL databases, text or CSV data, Power BI workflows and data sets, but today we're just gonna get our Excel file. Okay, so we're just gonna take our combined log file and we're just gonna open it. So it should bring us to a secondary tab shortly, which will ask us which Ta uh, tabs in the file we want to deal with. Um, it's good that your data is formatted in a logical structure that Power BI can make sense of. So in our case, we've got a header row and then everything below that is our data. And you can see that Power BI has successfully figured that out. And you can see all the data formatting coming through here. So once we're happy with this, we just load our data. And it should hopefully load with minimal or no warnings. Sometimes you might get a warning or two and it's good to review what those warnings mean, but I know in this case, this data should come through pretty cleanly. So I'm just gonna ignore any if they show up, but there we go. So it's coming cleanly. So now if you go to your data tab, you should um, see that you'll have 
data that should show up. There we go. So you can see that this is basically what Power BI is working with in the background. But in the foreground, we're going to start setting up some basic charts. So I think the first one that we'll use is just a donut chart, because this is a really simple graph to understand. So the moment you place this, it's sort of placeholding what you want to put as a graph. So it, it comes down to what you want to actually sort in this graph. So in this case, we want to sort uh, based on our users, because we want to visualize who's using Dynamo. And then we also want to sort by the value of users as well. And we're just going by count of user. You can go by different things as well. So distinct counts as well. Distinct count obviously just equally says all the users exist as one. So that's a good way to just show who's involved with Dynamo. But in this case, we're going to do a count. So this is actually going to weight who's done more than other people using Dynamo. So you can see here that obviously I'm quite heavily weighted in my organization and I have two other users that are using Dynamo with me at the moment. Um, there are a few more in my company, but at the moment that these are the only ones that I've loaded the log file process into their, into their computer for. So that's why we can only see them. And obviously you have a lot of uh, formatting options as well under the second tab here. So you can add a lot of things if you really want. You can add data legends as well to see colors and who they are. So you can actually turn off the labels and just do it based on this. So what I could do is go and customize my data colors. So I can say that, you know, I'm, I'm this color and uh, Victor can be this color and William can be this color. And you can see that my legends dynamically update. Um, I can turn off my data labels here as well, just to make this more visual. And then I can also do things as well, such as changing the inside radius of the, of the chart. So there's a lot of customization available and I can modify my title here as well. I'll just call it who is using Dynamo. So you can make it very personalized um, and I can just center my title as well. I can probably center my legend as well. Uh, I think position center, top center. There we go. So you can see that it's really customizable and I can add background colors to my header as well, but I'll just leave that for now. And I can obviously increase my my title as well, change its color. So you can just see how much formatting is available in each chart. Um, but I'm just going to, I'm not going to go too deep into every other type of charts formatting method. And as you hover, you'll see you get actually samples of data and see how I can isolate my data sets by clicking on various portions. So there's a lot of power in that data isolation. So once we have some other charts in here, you'll sort of see uh, what that does. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a stacked bar chart to measure our popular scripts. So in this one, we want to measure uh, our scripts as our axis. And we're going to make that our count. So we're going to make our values script as well. And now you can see automatically that Power BI knows that I want to have each row is a script. And, and basically the axis is just how popular that script is. And then it, see it introduces a scroll bar as well. So I can actually just scroll through all my scripts, which is brilliant. Saves me a lot of time. There is there's some formatting options with this one where I can't seem to push the script quite far enough to the left, so I can't see the full name of the script. I think once you reach a certain point, it sort of lets you go a bit further. Um, it just depends on how condensed you want your data to be. Um, likewise, if we go here, we've got a lot of options for how we want things to be colored as well. Um, so we can go show all and we can custom colorize everything, or we can just make a data color so I can just say all my data is, is blue. Um, I believe here you can change a couple of aspects as well. So you can set logarithmic scales as well if your data obviously goes up quite quickly at a certain point and you want to focus on the lower end. Um, so that, that's one way to sort of do it as well. I think here there's, there's a couple of options for how you can scale. Here we go. So that's how you can scale the width of the names. Um, so there you go. That's just, just some customization available. So just Again, an intense amount of customization available, which is just really, really great. There's so many things you can do with this. Um, so it's quite exciting just what this unlocks. So let's just put this here and let's just say we only want to see the top five, the top five scripts. So in this case, you have to go back and for the filters, you need to change script is all and use top N instead under visual filters. And we'll just say top five and we're basically going by count of the script. So the top five based on their count. We'll apply the filter and you'll see now we only get the top five scripts in our company. So that's a really helpful way of just really isolating what's important. And now check this out. This is where it gets really cool. So see how my data is actually dynamically responding to show me who's using these scripts the most. 
Um, pretty cool, right? So I can isolate data sets and I can see this is how much, you know, I've used them. This is how much, uh, you know, this person's been using them. So it's, it's a really quick way to link all your data together. Um, another really helpful piece of data you can get in Power BI is what's called cards. And cards are sort of like text. Um, so let's just say we want to see the amount of time we've saved. I'll just put time saved in my field and automatically it knows how to sum into one number. So we can see overall we've saved 3.14 hours. But check this out. If I want to see how much time I've saved, it responds to me. See, I've saved 2.75. He saved, you know, 0.4 of an hour and he saved no time technically. So you can see just that dynamic, dynamic response really coming together. Um, another really cool thing to add is gauges. I use gauges quite a lot because I think that they're a good way of measuring goals. So let's just say we want to measure the number of scripts that we've run. So our value is script and you can see already it knows that we're just measuring the count of script. So we can say that the types of scripts using count distinct. So we can see we've had 21 types of scripts run. But at the moment, we're just saying we want to see all of them. And immediately with gauges, jump to format and go to gauge axis. And you can say that our minimum is zero. Let's say that uh, our target for the amount of scripts we want to run um, this month is 50. And you can set a maximum scale as well. So if we go over it, great. And we'll just apply that. And see, we've got a little target. And we've also got a gauge that we can see how far along we are. And you can get quite customized in terms of how you set these up. So you can add borders, you can do a lot of things to them. You can change colors, titles. Um, you can add tool tips and headers. There's a lot of options for how this works. And let's just take that count of scripts. And instead, let's, let's set a goal for how many users we want. So instead, we want to target a certain number of users in Dynamo, because obviously, the more people using Dynamo, the better it is. So we just go count of user. And then we'll go from the uh, looks like we want to go count of user distinct. So we have three users currently based on a distinct count. And obviously from there, we can go and set a more realistic goal as well. Let's say we're not expecting to get any more than 10 by the end of the month, and our goal is five. Uh, I'll just go check that again. Our goal target is five. And there you go. You can see that's how easy it is to set up gauges. I'll open a more precise version of this chart at the end that just has a little bit more formatting added to it just to show you how to clean this up a little bit and sort of a goal you can add. Um, you can add borders to gauges as well, which I sometimes do. So you just turn on a border and you can add a radius to them. And it makes them a bit more graphical. So they sort of stand apart from the data set a little bit more. You can do that with most scripts as well. I mean, not scripts, um, most aspects of the, the table as well. You can add borders to most of these graphs. So you can see that's a way to sort of isolate each graph from, from one another. Another way you can visualize users is by using what's called a tree map. Uh, I see these quite commonly for very visually inclined people that use things like marketing, who like to see things in a more visual way. So let's just sort by user and value by user. And there you go, you can see roughly in size, the scale of difference between each various person. Um, and then I can also obviously isolate by picking various portions of my tree map as well. I haven't been able to find a way to select the entire data set from the tree map again, whereas these ones you can click outside the pie chart and it responds. So that has been one weakness I found with tree maps. Uh, there might be a way to do it that I'm not aware of. And you've got maps as well. I don't know exactly how the map field works. It looks like you need actual map data in here um, for when you have various locations that you're measuring. So, you know, where, where did the most events occur on a particular map? So there's a lot of potential with um with maps and dynamo uh, the last script we'll look at which is quite a commonly used one is what's called an area chart so this is when you need you're needing to measure something over a period of time so we want to see how many scripts are being used uh, month to month so what we'll do is our axis is going to be time and we're going to measure it based on month so we're just going to remove all fields except month and we're measuring script as our value and you can see immediately it tells us uh, how many scripts are being run each respective month. And you can see our data climbs quite quickly. Um, if we go into format, we can actually go and change certain things. So we can label our data and you see numbers and you can also tell it to, I think you can tell it to sit in a position. So we can say it's always above or it's always under. I think you can give it a background as well if it's too hard to see. And there you go, you can see and you can add a transparency value to that as well and it just responds to the color you tell it to be. So really cool, right? And so simple, I just set that up with a few clicks. Um, so it's, it's really impressive just how much data you can pull out of this software. 
And you can also, in nearly every every one of these graphs, you can actually go and check on more data about it. If you go show data, you can actually isolate it and look at the data in numbers as well. So uh, such a powerful way to review data. Um, so I might just quickly, I'll just save this and then I'll open up the final, the final one that I put together um, so I can show you it in action. But it, it's pretty much the same in principle, but I'll open it anyway. Okay. Hopefully this opens to the same scale. So Power BI can open multiple sessions at the same time. So at the moment, I think I'm gonna end up with an additional session over the top, so it might block my screen temporarily, but I'll resize it once it once it shows up. Come on, taking its time. There we go. All right, so it's straight off on my other, other screen. So once this loads, so you can see I've sort of taken a bit of time to clean this this script up once everything boots up. It needs to refresh the data um, first. There we go. Cool. Um, so you can see that I've cleaned this up a little bit. I've renamed a few things. Um, I've changed the colors of some things to make them more responsive. But obviously you can see that all the graphs respond to each other as I isolate the data set. So I can just look at me, how many scripts I've run. Um, you know, I can check Victor, how many has he run? He's run two in this month, one in this month. Um, you know, I can see that I've run a majority of my scripts during, during July. Um, so it's great. And you can see those adjusting as you go as well. Um, but it's a really quick way to just visualize the success. I think obviously the time saved value is quite important. And I've set up a top user here as well, just by setting up, um, I think that's just user first. And then I've done a top N for my visual filter. Um, so I believe in here I've said just show me the top one in this case, or the top the top user, and that just shows me you know who's using the most scripts in the company, um, just to set a little bit of competition in action. Um, so that's pretty much Power BI in a nutshell. Uh, but there's so much more you can do with it too. And if if your data ever updates, so if you gain more log files, you just right click here and go refresh data, and it will refresh your Excel file. And all your tables should update to suit the data set as well. So say in like two months I come back, I could refresh this and pick up two more months of data. Um, occasionally you're going to end up with some errors, I believe. So I'll just check what those errors are. I think in this case it might be struggling to read the date um, by the looks of it. But that, that might come down to reformatting your dates in the Excel file. I think that's probably what's doing it. Yes, yeah, so that, that's why it's not working in this case because it's it's struggling to format the date. So just keep in mind, you may need to reformat your date times um, when you reboot the tables. Um, so in here as well, you can see that um, there's a lot more you can do with Power BI as well. You can set up relationships between tables. Uh, this is a more complex backend of, of it, but for really complex things like accounting, you might need this. Uh, and you can set up bridging documents between various tables that relate to each other. And you can also get a mobile version um, for Power BI as well, where you can visualize the same data in Power BI. And you can also connect things like R and Python to, Dynam uh, to um, Power BI as well. So there's so much potential with what you can do with this. Um, so hopefully that's helped showing you a new tool and a new workflow that might help you and your company in assessing uh, Dynamo and how successful it is, and also gaining more time for R&D. Um, if you enjoy what you saw today, feel free to follow and subscribe if you're not already. And thanks for watching. Hopefully you saw the, the full series and enjoyed what you saw. Um, hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Uh, thanks. Take care. Bye.